I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's analysis of the news. Well, there's a lot in the news today. For example, the Egyptian negotiator is coming to Israel, the peace negotiator. He is uh, General Omar Suleiman. And he has arranged to meet with the prime minister, defense minister, foreign minister, opposition leader, and president. After exposing Hezbollah's Iranian-backed machinations to destabilize the Egyptian government, Cairo finds it is fighting an enemy shared with Jerusalem. The Egyptian visitor and his Israeli hosts will seek to define common interests. Now that the White House has finally announced that Mr. Netanyahu, Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak, and Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas are invited for separate talks on the Middle East, peacemaking, on dates ranging from late May to early June. The announcement followed Obama's conversation with the, exist, with the visiting King of Jordan, Abdullah II, at which Washington sources disclosed the U.S. president accepted, get this, he accepted the foreign minister's um, peace plan, the Saudi Arabia peace plan, and reaffirmed it at a conference in Amman this month. Three major flies in Washington's peacemaking ointment are, number one, the rival Palestinian Hamas and Fatah factions failed to achieve a power-sharing accord in the negotiations brokered by General Suleiman. Mahmoud Abbas, therefore, represents only one Palestinian faction and not necessarily the largest one. The rejectionists Hamas and the Gaza Strip would be left out of any peace equation and uh, they might be well placed to sabotage it. Secondly, Syria stands opposed to the Arab peace initiative. Well, that's not a plus. The Israeli position will be clarified by Mr. Netanyahu when he meets with the U.S. president in Washington about a month. Whatever concessions he may offer, they will not include acceptance of the 1948 Palestinian refugees or the renunciation of historic Jerusalem to the Palestinian state. Both of these, of course, are part of the Saudi plan that our president has adopted. Sources add that the U.S. president is seriously considering making a televised speech before Mr. Netanyahu arrives in Washington in order to play up the Arab proposals on the offer for far-reaching Israeli concessions to the Palestinians in Syria. In other words, our president plans to do a lot of arm-twisting with the Israeli prime minister in hopes of getting Israel to give concessions to the Arabs once again. Now, can you imagine what would happen if Israel accepted Palestinian refugees? Please understand that when the 1948 war broke out, following the raising of the flag of Israel on May, uh, in May of 1948, um, a war broke out and the Arab states who claimed they were going to drive this little Israel who had no standing army and no ammunition to speak of, just a few handguns, going to drive them into the Mediterranean. And the Arab states, Jordan, Egypt, Syria, said to the Palestinians, leave. But we'll let you come back once we get rid of these Jews. And then you can live in all those houses. So... 700,000, as I understand the number, 700,000 Palestinians left home. They are <laughs> refugees. Well, since Israel won that war, the United Nations and the Arab states said, well, let's take account of the refugees and make sure they have refugee status so that they can go back home someday if we ever take the land back away from the Jews. Well, five million Palestinians signed up as refugees. 700,000 left. Five million said, oh, we used to live there. Now, can you imagine if five million Palestinians flooded Israel? I'm, I'm not talking about Ramallah in the West Bank area or the Gaza area. I'm talking about Israel, where the Jews live. If five million 
refugee Palestinians moved in uh, where four million or thereabouts of uh, Jews live, they could outvote the Jews in the next election. Oh, yes. Palestinians living in Israel have the right to vote to this very day in Israeli elections. Can you? In fact, Palestinians have representatives in the Israeli Knesset. You see, Israel is much more tolerant than Palestinians and Arabs. The sources add that the U.S. president is seriously considering twisting Israel's arm, so to speak, well, here's another article that says that Iran could produce its first nuclear weapon within 60 days. They have seven 